takes us to the Penguin Episode 5 Homecoming. Um, with his nascent operation at stake, Oz makes a desperate move to turn the tables. Meanwhile, Sophia strives to build a new legacy for herself as a gigante. <laughs> Added in that last part. <laughs> um Will, what are some of your overall thoughts, overall thoughts about homecoming? Yeah, escalation. I think I think is what what if I had to sum it up in one word. Um and just to expand on that. I mean, just everything that happened, you know, last week's episode was just, you know, phenomenal. I think I I call it riveting. Uh and, and this week's episode really just took them what happened there and just you know took it up a level you know we do get more of oz this week and uh, and um and of course sophia and her uh yeah, continues to go on a path that um while you know how she is planning on building her family and and her own crime family now in gotham and so you know this this episode truly did escalate a lot of things pull you know again got now that as i mentioned before with the earlier episodes we you know we sort of got introduced to these characters now all the all the chess pieces are, are being moved across the board oz is also you know he moves his chess piece but of course oz's own short-sightedness again gets the gets uh gets uh hamstrings him but uh but you know but he manages to rebound but those are just some quick overall thoughts as far as the episode itself yeah this uh reminds me a lot of episode two um Mm -hmm. in terms of the moving parts the different angles at play um trying to think about where so so we 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 start off essentially where we ended um, in a way, previously, because we we see um, them burning the car, yep. um, and then and then we we hear a Rex Calibre story um, from Oz. He's the same person that was mentioned in the first episode when he was talking to Al. Correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Yep. Here, here's some. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this out here because it came to my mind earlier today. Um, and I have no idea. Is there a chance that this Rex guy who we keep hearing about, who nobody else seems to have ever heard of, is Oz's actual father? Um, that's a, you know, that's a very good question and a good point because, you know, Rex in the comics before it was retconned was originally, uh, Selena Kyle's father. Mm, Okay. And and then in the uh, you know but for 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 the Matt Reeves the Batman verse we yep. you know, we discussed this and you know we discussed this last week yep. or maybe the week before he was now you know Carmine's Falcone's Carmine yeah, yeah Carmine's um, is Selena's father so maybe in yep. this story it was maybe that's and maybe that's sort of the tie-in between uh, Rex and um, and 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 why and Oz's mother uh, that that makes total sense because I think right and I know yeah that could be that could be the play here um, it, why there it, there's that affection there yeah it's it's also just we we definitely know like her, the mom raised the boys and she she makes references but we never hear a surname mm-hmm. um. And it's just, it's just interesting. It's just something that I'm like, why do it's funny how he always refers to this gangster, this like one particular person um, that had a big influence and it might not be his father, but it could be that he's also a bastard. So yeah, yeah, it could um, be that, but he clearly sees him as a father figure. It's sort of like the role he's playing that now he is sort of stepping in now for, for Vic, given that his father's dead. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then he he rounds up the boys um to help to and gets them to help him um take out the Moronies who have stolen the mushrooms. And this leads to 
logically them kidnapping Sal and um, Nadia's son. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah Vic, you know, Vic, Vic learned how to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vic Vic stepped up his game for sure. He he really yeah. wanted in on the action, and then immediately put on the bench for mom yep. sitting. But we'll get into <laughs> that in a moment. <laughs> um, and along the way, he learns about how Sophia has um, and her recent actions of taking her own family off the table um, uh, with a gas lead leak, mm-hmm. and and John Vitti survived. Yep. Yep. And we, and we got it. We got so, the we got the corrupt cop from uh, we got the, the the police chief actually who was a little tie in from the uh, from the Batman movie. Uh, I remember that 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 uh, the I guess it was the voice more than than his appearance that I remember from the Batman. Whenever uh, Sophia, whenever remember. was, yeah, 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 I remember, yeah, I know yeah. Who yeah, I know who you're talking about, but I don't yeah. remember him from the movie itself. The voice mm. just drove me crazy though. This entire yeah. episode. <laughs> That's why I think you remembered him. <laughs> but I love the way um, Sophia just like you know talked. You know she was like, yeah, you know, play with how she just played that game while she was was talking to the chief. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, she 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 definitely has a plan. Um, yeah. What what are your thoughts about? Her conversation with John Vitti, who she mm-hmm. basically holds hostage for most of the episode, and then ultimately her um, her using him to get everyone, bring everyone to the table, and then within a minute shooting him dead on the spot. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, uh-huh. like, think about that. Yeah, so you know, it was the whole conversation because I, I, we you know, we wonder why of all, of all people, you know, she she spared him, and then of course we learned the reason why because he, you know, he knew where Carmine's you know hidden money was, mm-hmm. um, and and but uh, I, you know, honestly, whenever she had him there in the uh, in the in the cellar, I guess where I guess the uh, I guess the catacombs where the family's all where the family's buried literally um i thought that i honestly thought she was going to kill him there after she you know i thought she was going to just talk you know with with the the cold water and everything else and the whole story about you know you know we we learned that uh you know v and and sophia's mom were cousins and and everything i i really thought after she you know he was going to spill the beans and then she was going to off him then but i love but i it made total sense why she spared him and then why she used him that way to get get the loyalty of all all of the you know falcone uh muscle men there uh mm-hmm. in the room it was you know it was i thought about you know thought about other gangster movies and you know whenever she kissed kissed johnny on the uh back of the head and i was listening to the uh official penguin podcast and they were talking about that moment and the whole the whole kiss of death and yeah uh, that you see that in a lot of you know the, a lot of this the, the genre um with uh gangster movies and stuff and you know they had a very interesting discussion about is it a chicken or the egg which was it really from the mob first or did hollywood was that hollywood invention but either way i thought that was just uh, a great uh you know really just was the final straw and then you know and, this, and this happened when a, when a moment happened i was just seeing, seeing the blood spill all over the table and like you're seeing, you know soaking the blood and i was like man the blood money there uh yeah. literally this visually yeah. it was just like so it was just the visceral nature of it, it was just so like gripping and well, and it it yeah. felt like it was a scene shot from a classic gob- mobster gangster yeah. movie yeah, like wasn't, that's wasn't why I still yeah. that there's not enough references to like that genre that people mm-hmm. are talking about. They're just sticking to Breaking Bad mainly. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that was what Godfather Two, if I recall. <laughs> with that yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just yeah. Um, I I one thing about for me, um the conversation between Sophia and John Vitti in the catacombs. Um, is it just me or was he in love with his cousin? 
it, it, it seemed that way. Yeah, yeah. There are there are some weird pauses and just the way he was saying things. I'm just like, so so are I get you, but you feel guilty because you introduced them. Mm-hmm. Is it you feel guilty or you wanted her for yourself? I don't understand what's going on here. Um, and we already know you were hooking up with Luca's wife, and yep. so who knows? Maybe she's yep. a second cousin. I don't I don't know. Um, but, but I just want to point that out and, and also, um, to stick on Sophia for just a a few more minutes, uh, Julian. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Julian basically proposed, right? (laughs) Basically (laughs) said, it's going to be you and me, as long as you'll have me, I am subservient to you. I just want to be in on it with you. Let me kiss, kiss, kiss the ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yeah, weirdest Ju- proposal ever. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, he's just, uh, yeah, there's so many levels to that, to that, real, his fascination with her. Because um, that's a fast, it's a, it's, it's like a fascination of just like seeing like how her family like treated her and, and, you know how she managed to 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 rise above all of this, uh, and, and become you know become you know, Sofia Gigante, uh, the, the new the new crime boss, but also I think just his role and I think he's you know he's feeling you know we talked about this before the guilt that he's feeling, you know maybe he went into Arkham with good intentions and now he's just trying to rec- you know trying to make amends um, you know for the guilt that he feels for. You know, standing by while she was while she was uh, uh, abused by the system, and and, and Carmine, right. you know, yeah. So I mean, it, it, uh, their relationship is just one of the more fascinating el- elements of the show for me. And, and seeing, and, yeah. and, and I'm just curious to see where where it leads. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure if I'm as fascinated or just a bit disturbed by it. Just mm-hmm. a bit like maybe that's what. Yeah. What's your angle here? Because I, I I think it's more of the guilt. But then again, you you also like heard about the deaths, the Mar- Maroni's, the multiple deaths, and then mm-hmm. immediately it was like, oh, that's that's Sophia. I want to be a part of this. Yeah. Like so so do you? Are you still guilty for what you helped create in her, or are you? Are you now like, oh, you're like me, or I want to be? Like, I don't know. I it's I think just... he, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I think the fact that now, now that he saw what she did to the, the Falcons, yeah, he he wants part of this. Yeah, I think. I well, think you're right. well, that's what he says. He he's like yeah. something along the lines of, I saw the release that it mm-hmm. did for you and the freedom, and I want that, and and maybe that's what it is. Like, yeah. I I need to be a part of something to release myself from this this person who did some horror horrific things to multiple people in arkham mm-hmm. um so now i'm just gonna join up in a gangster mob so i can probably kill people to get that yeah. right <laughs> 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 it's, I, yeah. okay yeah. Uh, kind of, kind of yeah. so there. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense though that makes total sense <laughs> oh my god um and 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 we, she, she does announce the, the Giganti family name. So she's taken her mom's name. The, um, she's not going to uphold her father's legacy for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what I heard, and and that just made me question: Are we watching the same show as everyone else? Apparently, some viewers have this theory that it wasn't Carmine who killed. Isabella, it was it was Al. No, no, it was it was Carmine. Yeah, yeah. The, that theory doesn't fly because yeah. we know for the fact that Car that Al helped get Sophia out, and the right. only time that she could be free was right after Carmine died. Like. Right. Like and Carmine, it's not it's not as though Carmine finds out that Al's the hangman, and then throws Sophie under the bus because he's already written off his son. Mm-hmm. Like we saw that dinner scene. So 
I, I just had to throw that out there that I think that's a ridiculous theory and makes me just mean like, are we watching the same show, people? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because to me that that just undermines everything that how what they've established here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, there, there's so many f- holes in that where I'm like, I, I feel yeah. like you're just trying to create a theory for the sake of having one when they've explained the events yeah. that happened very, yeah, yeah. very concisely. What they have not explained to me. Mm-hmm. My, my a, a big nitpick I have with this episode is is the the um the sal of it all. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cuz cuz Oz sends someone to to shank Sal in mm-hmm. in the jail, right? Yep, right. And then later we get he gets a call and it's not it's not who he ex- expected on the other line. It's not Mike. Mike's dead. It's Sal. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing I know, Sal's in this cabin. Mm-hmm. No, no longer in jail. So mm-hmm. so he goes from being in jail to no longer being to getting shanked to no longer being in jail. And then and then obviously Sophia knows really quickly how to find him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like she's got she's got good what? people. Yeah. I like I don't know what I had to take a bigger issue with. Like Sophia just me, like instantly knowing where he is, which yeah, I could I could probably like make make some logic to that. But yeah. the whole he's shanked and next thing we know he's picking up the phone in Ark or in in jail. And then the next thing we know, he's free. Yeah, yeah. Make sense. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, because I mean, most of the Maroni, well, because several of the Maroni henchmen. Well, I guess Sal. At that point, by that point, he knows that Nadia and his son are dead. Correct, if I recall. By what point? At the by the time he was at the cabin. Because I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, he, yeah, because yeah. Oz told him on the phone. Yeah, he told him on the phone. Yeah, so I guess I get you know, so, so he gets shanked. He, you know, clearly someone else. He, he you know, help us. He gets the keys. He gets out. Um, yeah, and I guess he just gets one of his his henchmen to like get him up there and get his medical treatment i mean i i you know i guess we just have to like this that is that's maybe that's just uh, that transition was just left on the editing floor for for time yeah. or yeah um, oh but, definitely yeah definitely it yeah. was it was either but, left on the editing floor or it was just like we we're gonna try to like like you said at the very beginning like this is all about escalation and mainly mm-hmm. focused on oz and everything turning against him so mm-hmm. we have to keep that momentum so we we can't explain or show yeah. exactly how these other characters are moving but we have to get them to very specific yeah. places yeah and, and here's um, where also yeah that and also here's where you know we, we are still in the comic book universe so this is where the comic book stuff yeah. sort of fits in here <laughs> A little, folks, I yeah. don't know if that's that's a comic book flaw or just sometimes television in general has yeah. those. Well, for plot conveniences, we need to yeah. we can't yeah. show every little detail yeah. about about this side character. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, and and then that just that just leaves us well that leaves us with both Oz and then the Vic storyline. Um, yeah. yeah, and. And so, so with Vic, like, mm-hmm. like you said before, he's placed on mom sitting yep. and something else I am not hearing too many people talk about, yep. but it was really abundantly clear in watching this episode. The actress who plays, um, plays Oz's mom, mm-hmm. the fact that they're both able to talk in a certain cadence mm-hmm. where you're just like, oh my God. <laughs> like that, that's that is definitely his his mom. Like yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's just the cadence, it's the humor. Yep. It's just there's 
there's something so familiar. And then also the actresses did a fantastic job in this episode because when Vic comes to the house, she, within the span of minutes, goes from viewing him as her dead son. I don't mm-hmm. think, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Oz who she yeah. was viewing because there's a reference to Baseball Glove, who right. I think was John's or somebody's. Mm-hmm. And and reminiscing to recognition that, oh, yeah, you're a stranger. You're not, uh, my my son's dead. And like you see a more villain, villainous, an evil or a darkness come out mm-hmm. of her. To to just being excited that her son is going to need her help <laughs> because yeah, yeah. he's making moves. He's making moves. She's proud. She's proud of. She's oh my boy. My boy is doing his yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Just, it was it was a great display of acting. It if, totally if was. Anything. Yeah. Because yeah. Because. Yeah. We as the viewers are also watching this through Vic's eyes, like, okay, you're a nice old lady. Oh no, and I feel sympathetic to are you gonna slap me? To <laughs> <laughs> to oh you bruised, I have to take care of you, I'm responsible for you, to oh you're a nagging mom. <laughs> okay. <Yep. laughs> yeah, to this to going over to Crown Park, you know, to Crown Point and and, and it, yeah, and you're you're right. I mean, everything about the the, the mom is like the, the low key MVP of the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I like the line. Talk about VIP parking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and she she's was it was it a lamp or I forget what mm-hmm. she had in her hands while yeah. while they were going into the apartment, Francis mm-hmm. Cobb. Um, but but all of the work she did. And um, we we see Squid. Yes, yeah. From... Squid sees him going in. Yeah. Squid Squid definitely is going to be a player in some future episodes. Um, he's yep. still there. Yep. And yeah. and now they're they're held up in in Crown Point, and and uh, Francis points out like this side of town is cursed. Um, and and I almost feel like, to an extent, I wonder if her other sons died there, mm. as opposed to where she's currently living. Oh, I think so. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. It, it, I don't know if it was a subtle. I don't know if they were like trying to make the point that Oz they 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 they, they, they came out of Crown Point, and mm-hmm. and now they're on or. Or or that's just my interpretation, but you know, or or similar similar part of town like Crown Point, you know, with all the things that they were talking about, you know, Oz also mentioned in a great view of the city, uh, and it, you know, and, and the other thing about that that whole sequence, and how, and I love how they, you know, Vic was smart enough to like you know, use Crown Point as the hiding place, is you know, Gotham as, Gotham as a character, and we talked about this before, and 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 and, and really. Not only Gotham as a character, but also uh, tie in Vic's story that we saw in episode th- with his origins in episode three and how this how it got decimated by the Riddler's uh, terrorist acts. To you know, it, it it just again just just really like highlights re- all about Gotham as a character and in in and of itself and 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 so how it was used in, in this episode. Uh, not only from you know, like you said, where she was just so proud of, where France was so proud of Oz that she thought he was, you know, he's taking out the Maroonies, he's taking out the Falcons, and then the the utter despair whenever he, you know, after he's felled, um, and she realizes it, and he's there in the bed, and he's trying to get with her and all that kind of stuff, and that was a very edible, like weird thing too that I was this Oedipus, like I was like, Ugh. but with their relationship, but the disappointment, you know, with the, per- that was, that she felt because, you know, they, they came out of this area and now here we are back again. So I, I thought that yeah. was, really, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the title of homecoming, homecoming usually associate with good mm-hmm. um, and pleasant, but this was almost the reverse Yeah, where, they, because of the actions of 
of Oz, they are pushed back into this place which they had previously risen and come yeah. out of. Yeah. So yeah. it and 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 it was interesting at the end of the episode when they're going through the tunnels mm -hmm. and 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 it's funny because we start the episode with a moment of Oz reminiscing about his youth mm -hmm. to and we end the episode the same way where he's he's back in the tunnels that he used to roam around with mm -hmm. his brothers and instantly my mind goes to the old Batman movies and yep. um yeah Batman return and how the penguins hideout was in the tunnels and I'm like oh this is mm -hmm. this is so clever yeah and and then it gets even more clever when when they're like yeah we're gonna this is the perfect spot for us to grow these mushrooms because yeah. of the humidity and it just the like when we talk about grounding elements or making the the superhero genre more realistic that is what this show is doing to perfection um yeah. where it's it's hilarious um to me that we're on episode five and we we're in it we're in gotham like mm -hmm. this place we are very familiar with it for decades yeah for sure <laughs> yeah yeah nobody's thinking to themselves or at least i'm not where's batman yeah like because honestly if you look at everything that has happened why would god why would batman suddenly appear yeah you're like, right they ha they haven't done anything. They've killed people, yeah, but they've also killed each other. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. yeah, it's just a it's a gang war, like, and Batman's yeah. At this point, yeah, he's just, yeah. There's no uh, and and why that works is also there's no need for that a typical hero. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that Penguin in any way is an anti-hero. I'm saying the Penguin is the protagonist of the story. Yeah. Now why he works as a protagonist and you can still root for him is because we're shown like the reasons why to be empathetic i mean specifically with his mom and this mm -hmm. yeah sometimes it can lead to that oedipus but at the same time you're you see other moments where it's like she she's clearly sick but you also see the past abuse like it's so multifaceted yeah that you feel empathy for him and then his conversation with eve carlo and how we've seen that relationship and and we understand from her perspective like i don't hate her i'm not mad at her but i also am just like i don't know if that was the best decision to suddenly say penguin i'm out <laughs> you're, yep, yep. you're kind of on your own we need to disassociate because I need to protect what's mine and you need to do you obviously because I'm I'm not going down with you. Mm -hmm. Um so so I'm curious about w when she'll show up again in future episodes and and how they'll come to terms or if she's living beyond this season. Um but but anyway, so we're able to just like we're able to root for the gangster mom mobsters of like sopranos yeah. of of godfather it's just the family of it all <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it's just fascinating yeah yeah it is it is and like you know and, and uh, you know just to go back to my opening thoughts as far as like you know uh oz's short-sightedness again and like and, and you know, and, and you're right. He's not an anti-hero, uh, but he is the hero of his own story. And, yeah. and and whenever he's doing these actions, like when he does, like you know, whatever uh, he he makes it to the Maroni lab to do the exchange, and Nadia's there, and you know, and, and, and the sun comes out, and he's all drenched. And I was like, where? I was like, okay. And I'm thinking, you know, my mind went back. Honestly, it went back to to Vidi, uh, being mm -hmm. soaked, and then. You know, but then when Oz, lit, you know, lights to the lighter and sets the, you know, trail of gasoline and, you know, and again, bookending the chariot from the beginning of like, you know, when they blew up the car 
to now this. Yeah. Uh, just the, the fire, you know, just the purging fire. But then in that same moment, again, his short sightedness didn't think that, oh, if we set this where, if I set this place on, you know, set them on fire, right. I might set off the, the suppression system and then like destroy all the mushrooms. And, and so, it, well, you know, the, so, the mushrooms, yeah. he also asked to see the mushrooms, like mm-hmm. they wouldn't have been as destroyed. Like yeah. there, there was a lot of error. Yeah. And yep. what he was doing. Um, there was also that look at mm-hmm. the fire yes. when yes. it was burning. Mm-hmm. And, and now that I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. And now that I'm thinking, I wonder if if by fires how his brothers died. Mm. Mm. Maybe. Like there, there was a weird, a weird moment there. And usually when they hold on things, it's it's because of they want to express something without. Yeah. Yeah, I think telling def- you. Yeah, that that's a good that's a good theory there because I mean we we had the we had that look both at the beginning whenever the Maserati was blowing burning up and then also whenever he was burning the burning Nadia and her son. Um, yeah, so there's there's that piece, but you know, but at the same time, you know, he's a survivor and mm-hmm. and, and you know, he managed to to salvage two buckets. And and then uh, as you as you as you described earlier, you know, they, they, whenever he remembered the old trolley system, and that that's we could see, we could see the the progression of how he becomes the gentleman crime boss of of Gotham uh, with with you know the actions that we see at the end of this episode. So I mean, this show is just so just so well so so well done. I mean, there's so many great great things about it. I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. This, I, yeah. I, I think last week was better than yeah, this it was. week. Um, but um we're we're we got momentum and we're we're being they're being very consistent um yeah. with the story. Yeah. Um and you feel like you're in safe hands because you're like everything is gonna lead to something and and that makes it fun and entertaining um mm-hmm. to watch. It is. It is. All right. Well, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K, on X, formerly known as Twitter. And you can find me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.